and welcome to Youth in Agriculture. My name is Marion Munyao Nganga. Na leo niko Kimbadaski. And this is not your ordinary Kibandaski because it has black soldier fly. This is Kinda eh Kinda Kibandaski Enterprise Limited and we have the operations manager. She is called Gladys Wakonyo here with us and she'll be telling us why black soldier flies love color white among as many other stuff that you really want to know on how to do BSF. This is something that is so delicious to chicken and it requires very small piece of land. No na banya pa tuna squeeze squeeze eh? Ni jutu yako but BSF requires limited land that you can also do in your balcony or in your ka small shamba. Karibu sana kwenye show. Thank you so much. Karibu wow. Sana. First of all, I'm admiring your youthfulness in farming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Telling more people to come join us in agribusiness. Aye, but why though? Muna mwite, e place kibandaski. We know it for place here, you know, chapuma dondo ya 50 bob. It's actually kibandaski, but kibandaski with an E-R, the bourgeois version of a kibandaski. Ooh, abu spell it for us. Kibandaski. Eh, spell it. K-I-B-E-R-N-D-Y-N-D-A-S-K-Y. Nemana hizi BSF zinapenda kala white. Zimeomoka. Zimeomoka, but also they love light. They should be in light, in places where there is light. That is why, that is why they are put in color white, eh? Yeah, in nets that are, in nets that are right, of course, and also in greenhouse where there is much lighting coming through. Now, let's talk about you. What is your background in agriculture? Actually, Ibatol, it's there. <laughs> actually, I have no background in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Myself, I did mm -hmm. business administration, procurement in specific. But farming is purely passion. I wouldn't say I have any background in agriculture. It's just passion and learning on it. Mm -hmm. yes. What did you study in school? Business administration, procurement is my field. Really? Mm -hmm. You are procuring BSF? I'm procuring BSF, uh -huh. I'm selling BSF, yeah. I can outsource for you many things, BSF. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How did you get yourself here and which position are you holding here? Um, I'm mm -hmm. the operations for business development lead at Kibandaski. Mm -hmm. How I got myself here, so the founders, it, Kibandaski itself is a women-led, women-run business. I love it. So I got, one of the, well, the co-founders was mm -hmm. my friend and they happened to mention this uh, business to me. At the time I think I had lost my job. Mm -hmm. So I was, because I love farming and it's yeah. something I'm passionate about, I was like, you know what, why not? I'm open to learning and I'll mm -hmm. I jumped on it. And it was not the conventional type of farming. So I'm, because I'm a curious person, I was like, this sounds interesting. And I was like, okay, let's jump on it and see how this journey will be. And actually it's something that I love so much. I, it's, it's just very easy and I flow with it every day mm -hmm. and I don't struggle with it. Yeah. But it's also beautiful. Once you learn the concept about BSF, it's something very beautiful. Uh, tell, tell me about your background, maybe when you're growing up. Mm -hmm. What kind of a kid were you? Were you into farming? Were you looking at insects and you're like, wow, adorable? <laughs> Funny enough, no. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. The only kind of farming that maybe I was exposed to when I was young, the usual, uh, yeah. because I'm from Rift Valley, that's just the usual, uh, Waru, Menji, etc. Because my, my mom had land there and they used to do those kind of things. But insects, no. Now you've no. lost your job, you've decided that, let me try new things. Mm -hmm. How did your family, maybe your friends take it when you told them that, hey, I want to go to a farm and work? Actually, my, my parents are very receptive because mm -hmm. I'm, also, I'm also a very inquisitive person and I'm, very, I'm a very curious person. I just jump on whatever my mind tells me. And to me, this idea was sensible enough. So I, 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 they, they, nobody had any like queries with me mm -hmm. during this. Mm -hmm. yeah. After all, it's passion. It's what you want to do and it's what you want to do with your life. Yeah. Take us through your day journey. What do you do on a daily activity? So on a day to day, once mm -hmm. I get to the farm, first things first. This is actually this is now the hatchery bit of yeah. the of the. You have to come here first to check because the hatchery is the most sensitive place of the of the of the farm or the, of the business because it has to have optimal conditions. Mm -hmm. By optimal conditions, I mean the temperatures have to be right, humidity has to be right it, because they don't also feed here. The only thing they require here is water. So I have to check the trash. Do we have water mm -hmm. for them to suck? and mm -hmm. sustain their life cycle in the in the night. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to do. First come check the check the condition of the hatchery. Have they laid eggs? Have the eggs been collected? Mm -hmm. How much of it has been collected mm -hmm. and such like stuff. Mm -hmm. 
you can count those microscopic eggs yeah you can count you can scrap them off slowly mm -hmm. slowly and gently because also if you if you're rough you get yeah. eggs Mm. So there's a way we, we measure them in grams. Now on to BSF, they have a lot of stages, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, what are they? So BS, the, the, uh, BSF, just mm -hmm. like any other insect, yeah. it has the egg, larva, pupa, adult cycle. But also in BSF we have six stages, which are the six insta stages, mm -hmm. from insta one to insta six. So from the, from the collection of the egg, to incubation that is in the nursery yeah. and now feeding mm -hmm. until now collection as protein mm -hmm. and then there's also we give them another two weeks to pupate mm -hmm. and then bring them back to the, to the hatchery yeah. to, to repopulate the colony. Mm -hmm. So it has the six stages and I'll take mm -hmm. you through the stages as we move on. Mm -hmm. But the first stage is collection of the eggs to yeah. incubation and getting the five day olds which are now the first stage of the then after that after that from the nursery now you start feeding them with now the the organic feed now to that part organic feed ikonani nindani organic feed mm -hmm. is basically any market waste there's chicken chicken droppings there's a pig manure there's market fruit spoils uh, there's a hotel hotel yeah. waste as long as it's not contaminated mm -hmm. it should be purely organic purely mm. organic that's okay. what contamination. No contamination does it have any do's on or don'ts not not mm -hmm. really, not it's not really but mm -hmm. also you have to look at where you're getting your waste from because if it's the the market yeah you can always uh remove the the plastic the nylons and everything if it's the hotels mm -hmm. then it's purely food Mm -hmm. If it's the the chicken chicken uh, droppings, droppings yeah. then it's purely chicken droppings. Mm -hmm. If it's pig manure, then you also know where we get resources from our farmers, and you know what they are feeding their, their pigs. So we get something that's relatively not toxic and safe. Mm -hmm. How about the acidity level? Does it really matter when it comes to the organic waste? Well, yes. Yeah. Because uh, say something like pineapples and yeah. and, and uh, the what do you call them? Citrus. The, the, the citrus fruit. Mm -hmm. You can't feed the SF on purely uh, citric um, mm. uh, waste. Yeah. So you have to mix and find a balance for them to enjoy the feed and also. Just like any other any other fly and even us, you need a balanced diet. That's what mm. you do. So you have to add some protein, you have to add some fruit, some melon here, some veggies here, just like that. What waste can really neutralize the acidity? Well, uh, we, avocado is really nice. Nice. Yeah, avocado is really nice. I also bananas. love avocado. You love avocados? Yeah. yeah, avocados, bananas, uh, a bit of now the, the, the uh -huh. what do you call them? The oranges. Oranges. Yeah, so it's a mix of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And the manure also, the pig manure is also added. Mm -hmm. Do are they choosing when it comes to the temperature of this waste? Do they want it really hot, really wet, really dry? No, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Actually, there is uh, there is uh, the the substrate of the of the waste should yeah. actually be about between. 70 to 90 Ooh. so it's not it shouldn't be too wet mm -hmm. and also not too dry in between in between in between so what you do because you can't not everybody can afford to do the mm. the scientific mm. measuring and doing everything mm. you can just do a rough if you maybe you have a sub you have substrate here yeah you squeeze it with you with your hand mm -hmm. it should produce at least a, a few drops of water oh, that's how yeah. you know it's it's good enough mm -hmm. but if it's too wet you won't even be able to to squeeze anything off it yeah because it, it will be a sludge yeah definitely mm -hmm. it will eh? so how often do you feed them so feeding mm -hmm. feeding from 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 the nursery yeah the feeding is done twice or thrice until now harvesting that's per day no 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 within the cycle oh within how long is cycle. this cycle the cycle so from from the nursery point uh -huh. from the incubation now from the nursery uh -huh. we collect them as they now the five day olds which is yeah. now the first insta uh -huh. from the first insta now you introduce them to to this uh, market waste or whichever uh -huh. substrate you've prefer to prepared for them definitely so from that point you put the first feed yeah they feed on it for like three days you add them in this case don't eat quickly they eat quickly because you're not also putting uh, too little of the, yeah. the substrate mm. they eat quickly so they, there's an amount you put of course definitely uh, a specific amount of the five day olds mm -hmm. and a specific amount of the substrate that you put into the crates mm -hmm. which they feed for a certain time so between uh the five day olds and the the day of harvest yeah. should be 14 days 
14 days. 14 Five days, days all days of harvest, 14 days. So by the time it's... That's from Easter 1 to yeah. Easter 4. So in total those are 19 days. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's around 14, uh, 14 days. And that they are ready to be harvested now as protein. As protein. As protein. For the chicken, of course. For the chicken, fish, pigs, etc. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So which is this specific amount? This specific amount. Mm. So depending, like you've seen, our crates are not the... They are recommended crates, like yeah. the ECP recommended crates. Mm -hmm. But as we've tried to come up with our own, because also oh, yeah. you're looking at the pockets. Definitely. You, if you if you mm -hmm. if you're trying to encourage youth to do this thing, and you're also giving them the very high budget, yeah, they won't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to come up with something that works. For you. Mm -hmm. This is also recycling this plastic. We're mm. also trying to recycle this pla mm -hmm. plastic. So for this, you we, we put about two kilos of. Two to three kilos of now the waste mm -hmm. and about 10 grams of the the five day olds which are the hatchlings they're very tiny 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 bits of mm -hmm. the what does this substrate substrate comprise of the substrate for mm -hmm. us comprises of market a mix of market waste mm -hmm. and pig manure and pig manure that is a standard substrate formula for us yes. for, for you yeah yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. wow and seeing this uh 19 days also to say mm -hmm. feed on this kind of substrate is there any difference in terms of the quality the size that you've seen as compared to the kawaida substrates that farmers use to feed their bsf at this first cycle which you've mentioned it's an insta mm -hmm. yeah so what i maybe what i didn't mention mm. for the incubation part mm. we don't use the regular substrate for now the feeding mm -hmm. for the first stage yeah we use a uh, wheat burn and water oh because yeah, yeah that's that's mm -hmm. for the very tiny hatchlings for them to mm -hmm. lay for them to lay their eggs there why mm -hmm. because of uh which one is purely is, is pure starch yeah because of the energy the warm yeah so just like a baby when they're they're, they're very tiny you easy to digest you know, their cares are yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's easy to, to digest for them but then after the five days now they get into the the substrate the plus the yes. little quad ground little quad ground sides nakula manure market waste and everything that is I really Good like to know. I really like Good to know them. what the sixth Insta feed comprises of. But we're just about to go on a short commercial break. Remember, today we are talking about black soldier flies. Of course, we are here in Rai with Gladys, who is a pro in this farm. And by the way, this is her job. She's not the farm owner. That means that a farm can give you an office. Definitely, it can. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. back to youth in agriculture my name is marion munyao nganga and we are talking about black soldier flies in case you have just joined us now remember on the first part of the show gladys who is the farm of today has mentioned a very important thing that from the zero eggs sorry from the zero days to five days old these eggs they feed on what which bran and water because do not take a kidogo lakini in case you see a black soldier fly on my skin or my clothes don't worry they are so harmless they are peaceful they are quiet okay they're noisy well but they are so you know peaceful creatures and thank you so much again for joining us thank you yes so that we are on insta ya kwanza to me maliza on insta ya kwanza insta ya pili tell us about the feeding so insta ya pili is when we introduce now the the five day old that mm -hmm. to now the substrate which is now the feed uh, like i told you now the, the mixture of market waste and pig manure yes mm -hmm. so here now we put the very the, the amount i told you like the 10 gram with the three kilo waste mm -hmm. in each container in each tray and we label them by dates or yeah. color coding exactly that's now yes. another thing mm -hmm. i've seen bsf fans use red yellow <laughs> because, because you also you also have to know because i told you there's time for harvest definitely so you can't do things randomly mm -hmm. so you have to know after 14 days i'll have to harvest this yeah this larvae so you have to have a color code or date for you to know at the end of 14 days this batch should be ready for harvest what color do you guys use there are many colors yeah we have like five different colors for each each day uh-huh tell us about them like monday to friday for monday we have a different color 
like red, red. Tuesday blue, Wednesday uh, green, green, black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that, like that. Oh, it's not a specific bright color. They can no. also work with black. No, no, I'm just saying for the stickers. For the stickers. For the stickers of now, the, yeah. But not for the containers. For the containers, we have white. Everything is white. Everything is white. Mm -hmm. Ah, amazing. White, actually, white. white and yellow. White and yellow. White and yellow. Mm -hmm. Why do they love these bright colors? They are just attracted to bright colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, at this stage, is where you get again to go back to the cycle that you had uh, started introducing them to on the first insta that mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. is the second by the way We've, or from the five day old yeah five day, first, first insta and then up to the 19th day second insta yeah then second, the third exactly exactly mm -hmm. Asa tumelza na naya tatu yane, wanalisho na nini? Ye wakifika yane, eh. they've already grown to a size that's good enough to be harvested. Mm. Harvested as now the protein that is now used to for, for animal feed. Yeah. So from the fifth Insta, you don't mm -hmm. actually feed them. They now transform from now the gray, goldish, the goldish brownish color. Yeah. They start turning black. Yes, they I've start seen that. They start turning black. black. And by the time mm. they are fully black, mm. That's pupa now. We bring it back here. Now for them to blossom into beautiful. For them to imagine to fly and yeah. not mm. we don't take everything back to the to the to the hatchery. So ten percent, yeah, because the cycle has to continue. Ooh, uh -huh. So ten percent is what we bring back here, uh -huh. and ninety percent has to be harvested and dried and sold to the millers or to the farmers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. Okay. So let's talk about the trees. Yes. The part of circling. Yes. Mm -hmm. so that at least we can ensure that this BSF have generational wealth. Yes. So to say, <laughs> yes. What do you do? What do you use, brother, for them to lay their eggs? So for them to lay their eggs, mm -hmm. you ha we have some egg collection de devices. Yeah. You can use cartons. Yeah. You can use the the wooden the wooden collection devices. You can use the plastic electric conduits because of the crevices. Yeah. You know they like to lay eggs in the in the crevices mm. because they also feel like any other female. They feel like that's a safe space for for them to to lay the eggs. But those are basically the the egg collection devices. Yes. When they are here, apart from making melodious noises, what other work do they do here? What they do here? Like I told you, this is a love cage or a love nest. Mm. Just love. <laughs> Nothing but love. <laughs> Nothing but love. <laughs> <laughs> nice way of putting it. <laughs> that's their work. Uh -huh. Actually, yeah. the flies don't have mouth parts, and that's why, unlike even the house flies, they don't spread any diseases. Uh, so me, they, they this just, one here, let me try to see. They yeah, just, yeah, it doesn't have it. it, it, it no, no, yeah, it doesn't mm. have. What we have here, you, mm. you will see some containers with uh, a cotton. Yeah. They just, suck, they just suck the water from the cotton mm -hmm. just to keep them going. Nothing else. They don't eat here. After they lay, mm -hmm. after the female lays eggs, that's it. For about the lifespan is about seven to ten days. After that, it dies. Ooh, and that's the only eggs. work it has here. After that, it mm -hmm. dies, and mm -hmm. now we move on to the next generation. Them? No, no, no. What do you do? With we, them? we sweep off, we sweep off the dead flies, mm -hmm. and we also ferment the flies, and they make attractant for us. So there's nothing going hey. to. Eat. <laughs> Hey, if we were all like BSFs, <laughs> nothing going to waste. <laughs> what? What amazing! Yeah. Wow. What are the challenges that you face? Well, maybe waste. Let me tell you, waste. Uh, people, people think waste is just everywhere, but actually, there's competition for waste nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's competition for waste. Mm -hmm. We have competitors like big, big farmers. Mm -hmm. They're also looking for because we are looking for organic waste. Not just any other list. So you need to start supplying you guys. Guys, I'm a supplier of organic Talk to me nicely. You talk to me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, waste is a problem. Mm -hmm. And also, I said that just the conditions themselves. Because I told you, like any other any other hatchery who any other person who's doing BSF needs a hatchery with certain conditions, the temperature, the humidity. So that's that's usually a problem to to try and make it mm. make it optimal i'd say mm -hmm. make it optimal what are the optimal degrees optimal temperatures are between 25 and 32 mm -hmm. humidity i'd say 60 to 80 percent yeah yes mm -hmm. and also make sure there's a there's attractant in every net attractant i told you is just the waste the, of waste the substrate the yeah. fermented mm -hmm. and because that's what really attracts the, the female to lay eggs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. so it's just stream making sure the, the conditions are really optimal on yes. to the capital. How much <laughs> can I start with? 
Uh, you always start small with whatever you have, you know. That's a nice answer. You always start mm -hmm. small with whatever you have. Like I told you, you don't have to start with the very expensive crates. Be creative. Be just try to work around things. Start with a few nets. Start with um, a, a small starter kit. Yeah, and the spaces you need very limited space to start this business. Mm. I'd say as long as you have the passion, you have the motivation and ambition, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Not as easy as yeah, yeah, but you can do it. Especially if you're doing it maybe for your own uh, consumption, I'd say, mm -hmm. not commercial, because commercial is also a bit expensive. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it for your own consumption, if you're doing it for your small village or neighbors, people will buy from you. On to the profit margins. Mm -hmm. How much are we looking at? It depends on the scale of business also, I'd okay. say that. Mm -hmm. Are you small scale, are you commercial? Mm -hmm. Like for example, in your experience? In my experience? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they are not watching <laughs> In my experience, yeah. it's a good business, that's what I'm saying. It's a good business. <laughs> for example... <laughs> it is a business, I'd <laughs> encourage anyone with disposable income to join, or even anyone passionate in agriculture. It's, sure. It's a good business. But now, on behalf of our loyal viewers, Mm -hmm. who are also farmers or potential farmers if i have ten thousand shillings how much will it make as capital and how much can i return and after how long ten ten thousand for ten thousand how much you easy make <laughs> well see how you easy make uh -huh. who make it as i make yeah but you will start small that's what i said you will have to start small uh -huh. because also you have to you, you don't just start you have to go for training Oh, this because training. you need knowledge yeah. of this thing. Mm. You need to train, and training doesn't mean uh, you you pay so much. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can come. We train. We train you. There's also ECP that does free trainings also. Mm -hmm. But also interacting with farmers who been who been doing it. Our ground knowledge a bit more different. I know. So yes, yeah. we give we give you the best info. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Eh? So I've come for my training. Is my 10,000 over Kwanza to start with? To make Kulanga pay for training? To make Kulanga pay for training? To make Kulanga pay for training? Ah, sour. 8,000, guys. 8,000 left. Eh? Uh -huh. So 8,000, what do I need? What can I buy with that? 8,000, you can buy a starter kit. A starter kit will comprise of maybe a few grams of eggs. Yeah. Uh, a few grams of uh, maybe third insta larvae yeah and maybe a few grams of paper mm -hmm. yes uh -huh. then how much can i be able to return because i put me kulangalvi it doesn't mean it's a actually to make a lot of to make a lot of seven thousand starter kits maybe we give it around four four thousand four thousand so that is six thousand gone already mm -hmm. that is two for the training four for the starter kit you're four thousand in guinea and you uh, if what in Guinea, I'm going to go to the crates. Like I'm going to go to the crates. I'm going to go to the crates. You slice them off and also you need to get nets. Yeah. Nets you can just make them in the environment that are... Mosquito net is a work? Oh, okay. So... <laughs> they are mm -hmm. the recommended nets. Mm -hmm. They are the recommended nets. But yeah, so there's, you buy crates, yeah. you buy the... Mm -hmm. You buy the nets, mm -hmm. and now you need the waste. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you need the egg collection devices. How much is that? To me back in a four thousand. Uh, Ten thousand will not be enough. So how much more can I add? How much more can you add? Mm. Because I, do, I also don't know if you have space for this. Yeah, but of course I have space. Yeah. My balcony. <laughs> yes, I do have space. Okay, assuming I do have space already. Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if your balcony, your, your balcony is not suitable for for putting the large cages. Why isn't it not suitable for putting? You the need a, a small greenhouse. Okay. Yeah, Additional need, cost. You need a small greenhouse. Uh -huh. So, so how much is that? it's not ten k. How much? It's not ten k. Give it a few hundreds of thousand. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Wow. Just maybe. Mm. A little over two hundred. Mm. You can start something, small, yeah, like a small greenhouse, like a small feeding area, a few nets. You have the um, the crates. Okay. Just something small to start you off. That's it. So, so say you have two hundred. You talk more after how long? You talk more and I see that you know more immediately. Mm -hmm. Because I told you this is a passion project. Yeah. You just don't have to wake up and uh, do do things and expect to get money the next day. Mm. So that's why I was telling you if you have. Pigs, 
yeah. sell her chicken. Yeah. It might be a very good business idea. Well, on that note, can you face this camera, give us an advice for the farmers, <laughs> and then you tell farmers where they can get you guys. Uh, so we are based in uh, Rai Bypass. We are doing VSF farming. It's a very good business for any young person out there who's who has a bit of money and is wondering what to do. This is a very good business. We offer training. We uh, in person, in person of course, because this thing you can't we can't do it over Zoom. But <laughs> <laughs> hands, hands, we offer hands-on training yeah. for groups and also for any individual who's inter interested. And we also sell our products, which we, which are the dried BSF meal, and we also have the byproduct, which is frost, the organic fertilizer, which is really amazing. We have good feedback from that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Guys, we may scan. We may up a quarter channel 10k. We may cut. Math has not math, but again, we have gotten amazing knowledge, credible information on how to go about BSF, and that is what exactly we give you every week here on Youth in Agriculture. Remember, if you want us to come to your farm, please to DM social media. Zeto Ziko Hapo, our number is right there. In your WhatsApp, send us your location, your name, everything that you need uh, for us to come there. And we'll definitely give you a call. And thank you so much for keeping us company. Remember, same time, same place. Keep it Youth in Agriculture.